welcome back so in this presentation by chemistry of bone we'll see the how bone metabolism is regulated okay it is regulated by hormones and various other factors today we'll mainly concentrate on hormones which regulate bone metabolism so the important hormone which regulate bone metabolism so let me write the structure of bone so we know that bone has got osteoblast and osteo so bone has got osteoblast and osteocyte okay oh, sorry osteoclast so osteoclast is multinucleated whereas osteoblast is mononucleated so whatever the regulatory hormone is mainly regulated through these hormones okay. so first we will take so there are mainly there are three important hormones so the first hormone which going to regulate is calcitriol okay so it is nothing but active form of vitamin d so i will make a presentation on vitamin d in some other presentation where we'll see how it will be activated at this moment it is nothing but activated vitamin d okay calcitriol another important hormone which regulate is parathormone which is released from three four parathyroid glands which are located behind the thyroid gland okay parathyroid another important hormone which is released from the thyroid gland it's calcitonin calcitonin okay so we'll see you now vitamin d or calcitriol so calcitriol so helps directly and indirectly so you can see whatever dietary calcium we are taking is must be absorbed to the blood vessels so imagine there is blood here okay whatever dietary calcium we are taking is it must be absorbed from the intestinal mucosal cell to the blood this is our blood or capillaries or blood vessels this calcitriol which is an activated vitamin d which is formed in the kidney will be transported to intestinal mucosal cell the exact mechanism we will make another video i'll explain in another video it helps for the absorption of calcium from the intestinal lumen to the cell uh, to the uh, to the intestinal mucosal cell and to the blood we require a protein that name of that protein is called calcium binding protein or simply we can write cal binding this vitamin d activated vitamin d calcitriol stimulates the formation of this protein okay cal binding so when there is more and more calcium binding proteins are produced in intestinal mucosal cell whatever dietary calcium it will be absorbed to intestinal mucosal cell then to blood so vitamin d actually the primary role of vitamin d it increases serum calcium it increases serum calcium and now this calcium co can go he here it is called deposition or mineralization okay mineralization or deposition deposition of calcium as well as along with calcium phosphorus also absorbed okay the main role of calcitriol it helps in synthesizing a calcium binding protein cal binding in the intestinal mucosal cell so whatever dietary calcium so most of the calcium is absorbed 
to the intestinal mucosal cell from that it will be absorbed to the circulation from the blood it will be deposited in the bone so this is another effect another way this calcitriol can directly stimulate this so we know that this is osteo osteoblast okay it can stimulate osteoblast so that it can stimulate osteoblast so that it can release alkaline phosphates again it will help in mineralization so that the direct effect it can stimulate our osteoblast so that osteoblast can release alkaline phosphates which are present in the surface of the osteoblast so they help formation of phosphate ion from organic phosphate so there will be mineralization okay and the they say vitamin d or calcitriol has got both anabolic as well as catabolic effect that means it has got activity it can active osteoblast also it can stimulate osteoclast also okay that means the depending upon the dosage of vitamin d it can have mineralization of the bone or so if it stimulates osteoclast what will happen there will be bone resorption so the calcium will be coming out of the bone and it will go to the blood but having said this this depends upon the primary role of vitamin d is to mineralize or deposition of calcium in the bone okay whenever there is less calcium in the blood whenever there is less calcium in the blood whatever calcium stored in the bone can be coming back to blood okay it can stimulate osteoblast or it can stimulate osteoclast depending upon the dosage depending upon the blood calcium okay and also it can stimulate a receptor called vitamin d receptor okay vitamin is action through vitamin d receptor and it will act on osteoblast as well as osteoclast but main thing you need to remember the major primary goal or primary role of vitamin d it deposit calcium or it favors mineralization because it favors absorption of calcium and also it increases blood calcium so that is about vitamin d the parathormone which is released from parathyroid gland the four parathyroid gland which are located in the thyroid gland back side of the thyroid behind the thyroid gland which release parathormone okay so this stimulate osteoclast so you know that whenever osteoclast they are bone destroying cell whenever osteoclast are stimulated it release calcium to the circulation so the stimulus for parathormone release is actually decrease calcium decrease blood calcium okay decrease plasma calcium whenever there is decrease plasma calcium parathyroid gland release parathormone so this parathormone actually stimulates osteoclast so there will be destruction of the bone cells so calcium will be released to the circulation another important hormone is calcitonin so this calcitonin actually released from thyroid gland thyroid gland so this thyroid gland which releases calcitonin so what is the stimulus for release of calcitonin whenever there is increased plasma calcium that means hypercalcemia so it will stimulate thyroid gland to release a hormone calcitonin so now it inhibits further destruction of it inhibits further destruction of bone or in other words calcitonin inhibits osteoclast that means there is no more destruction of the osteoclast that means there will not be entry of calcium from the bone or demineralization of the bone 
there will not be any demineralization okay because calcium whenever there is increased blood calcium thyroid gland release calcitonin it inhibits osteoclast so there will not further entry of calcium from bone to blood okay so that is the role of calcitonin and calcitonin also stimulates stimulates mineralization okay calcitonin also so if it inhibits osteoclast that means it stimulates deposition of this calcitonin also stimulates deposition of calcium or mineralization of calcium to the bone okay that is with respect to calcitonin similarly we have estrogen 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 also acts like a calcitonin it inhibits osteoclast that is why whenever there is women women after menopause there will be decrease estrogen so there will not be inhibition of osteoclast that means they will land up in so they are more prone for osteoporosis after menopause that is the reason okay similarly we have what is called growth hormone so this growth hormone also favors or it can stimulate osteoblast through a mediator called insulin like growth factor insulin like growth factor 1 and insulin like growth factor 2 okay it also favors bone formation whereas glucocorticoid glucocorticoid it actually inhibits osteoblast inhibits osteoblast okay so if you take the summary vitamin d actually it can stimulates osteo blast also it can stimulate osteoclast okay mainly it depends upon the dosage of vitamin d so they they say vitamin d has got both anabolic and catabolic but the the major function of vitamin d is mineralization even if it, if it stimulates osteoclast there will be favoring remodeling so together you can say vitamin d actually helps in remodeling of bone if there is resorption then only there will be new bone formation osteoid formation so vitamin d we should take vitamin d in optimum amount so that there will be continuous destruction and mineralization of the bone whenever there is destruction or resorption then only there will be formation of new bone okay vitamin d is very very important for bone metabolism parathormone parathormone actually stimulates osteoclast stimulates osteoclast so that so this parathormone actually favors demineralization lysation okay whereas calcitonin calcitonin it inhibits it inhibits osteoclast it inhibits osteoclast so it actually favors mineralization mineralization that means formation of osteoid or new bone okay this is the summary that this is how bone metabolism is regulated by these three hormones so vitamin d if i say vitamin d it is actually 
calcitriol active form of vitamin D that's about regulation of bone metabolism through hormones thanks for watching